Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY and I'm here for a short little video to talk about the Classic Mini breather system. So today on Classic Mini DIY, I wanna to talk to you guys about the Classic Mini breather system and how it works. But before we get started, I just want to mention a couple of things to you guys. It's all about the channel. First is, I mentioned this in my clutch video, which just came out a little bit ago, actually yesterday, day before yesterday. And that shows you guys how to install the Classic Mini clutch um, without taking the motor out of the car, which is pretty cool. But at the end of that video, I mentioned I completely reworked the Patreon tiers for the Classic Mini DIY channel. Now, I wanted to mention real quickly why I reworked those and what all that money is gonna be going towards. The short of it is, is that I'm trying to make those Patreon tiers a little bit more rewarding for the people who are contributing. Um, so I've got ones, I named them after the classic mini engine sizes. I also put one silly one right at the end, um, but it goes from 850 to 1275. I stuck with the stock sizes of the motors and each one of the tiers has all sorts of really cool free stuff. The bottom one being just, you know, basic entry level, you get access to discounts from the merch store as well as insider information early if I am posting early secret information but it goes up from there where you can get free stickers a free mug a classic mini DIY mug and even get a free t-shirt and uh, each tier compounds on the other ones so if you get the top tier and donate the top amount that you can obviously not the crazy silly one at the end but if you donate that top tier you get everything from every other tier including that of the top tier so if you're interested in supporting the channel, what that money is gonna be going towards are some future projects on the channel I'd really like to tackle and bring you guys along with me. Specifically, the first goal is getting to, I think, 50 subscribers. If I can get to 50 patrons, what that will give me the ability to do is build a K-series motor. I'm gonna build it from the ground up so I will get a brand new block and literally start from the bottom and build it all the way up, bring you guys along with me and show you guys how to do that. The next tier would be something even bigger. I think it's 100 patrons, and that would be doing an R1 conversion on a Mini. And then finally, the last tier would be a full VTEC conversion. Um, these are all projects that I really want to do on the channel, would love to bring you guys along with me on, um, but I can't do it without your support. All of this stuff would obviously be coming right out of my own pocket, and I just don't have the spare money to do something like that, especially to a standard that I would want to share it with you guys. So. If you guys think any of those projects are cool and help support me in getting to a point where I can actually do those, head over to the link that's probably been appearing along the bottom of the screen and is also in the description of this video. Now, that's enough about the channel. That's enough about kind of the future state, what I wanna do next. Um, but in this video, I wanna tackle something that I posted on my uh, Instagram. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, that's where I post all of the pictures and the things that I'm working on um, prior to a video coming out, all the announcements all come from at Classic Mini DIY 59. So if you guys want to see new stuff before it comes out, head over and follow me on Instagram. But I posed a question, do you guys wanna see the custom breather system that I put on the Mini? And I got a resounding yes. I, I didn't get a single no vote on that poll question, so here we are. Let's talk about the breather system. Now on the Classic Mini, there are a few different configurations. In the smallest displacement motor, they didn't even come with breathers on the car. Now, a short description of a breather, basically what it does is it allows gases that go around the pistons, so the pistons moving up and down, gas will sometimes escape around that piston. And gas escapes around that piston at a higher rate, the higher displacement your motor is, and the more compression you have. So you'll have this thing happening called off-gassing. And so that gas goes around the piston and into your crankcase and into your transmission case, in our case with the Mini because it's all shared. Now, with all of that extra pressure, you know, your motor's moving up and down really fast, that pressure has to go somewhere. And so the breathers are there to allow air out of that crankcase and that allows that gas to come out, but it doesn't allow oil to come out. Now, 
you have two places that the Mini came with a breather. Now, not all cars have breathers in both of these places. In fact, the small displacement motors didn't even come with them at all, which is kind of scary to think about. But the two places that they did show up on the car, one was on your timing cover. Now, the timing cover is showing up on the screen here on the left side or the right side, whatever it is. And this is in between your radiator and your actual engine block. So you'll have a breather that's sticking out there. So that's one place a breather can show up. The second place is on your transfer case or your, um, the case that allows you the power to be driven from the crankshaft down to the actual transmission, driving the wheels, et cetera, et cetera. And that is on the side with your clutch. Now those are the two stock places that breathers showed up. I think that there were some that might have been on the uh, Tappet covers on the back of the A plus motors, but I don't know if that was ever on the classic mini. I think that was on some other A series motors. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. If that's the case, let me know. But those gases had a few different options. And originally what happened is they came out of those breathers and just vented to the atmosphere. And that was kind of like an oil moisture uh, air mix. It was not, um, it was not just like straight air. Uh, unfortunately, oil mists and it would come out of those breathers as well. It would be an aerosol version of that oil and then obviously fumes and it makes it really smelly. Um, and this is just kind of the nature of old cars, you know, in general. But past that, as a form of emissions control and to kind of burn that off and keep that gas from, you know, polluting the environment, what they did is they actually started running that air back into the intake system. So to show you guys this a little bit better, let's move out to the car. You'll see my breather system is much different than what the original breather system would have looked like, um, but I'll explain what's happening and then I will show you guys how I changed it up on my car. All right, so to start off, let's take a look at your engine compartment here. Now, what I've got here is one of the old versions. This is an old fashioned PCV valve, and this is a positive crankcase ventilation valve. And what happens here is the, is the air comes in through this valve right here, and this valve does the job of preventing oil from going back into your intake, but allowing only the gas to go back in. All right, so now that you guys understand how the original breather system worked, why did I change mine? Well, the short of it is, is that I really just wanted my breather system to one, look cooler, um, be a little bit easier to work on, a little bit more tidy, and, uh, and I, I just wanted to try something new. So this is not fully finished yet, I don't think. I think I am still gonna be doing a little bit of extra stuff, um, which I'll talk about. But while the motor was apart, while everything was out, I actually had my friend weld on an AN fitting um, onto this uh, breather system. We added a little stock here like this because we weren't sure that when we welded that on, it wouldn't just like blow through that. I think long term, I wanna take a small welded bung here and move it down to the base and just create like a small little bracket, get rid of this whole canister here. That's long term though. That's not something I need to do right away. Um, but as you can see, I've got really nice cool A in lines going over here. And I'll talk about what this is in a second. And then on the other side, I have the same concept. I've got an A in fitting um, on the breather. We welded that on, on the timing cover. And then I have a hose, this one right here, same size running all the way back from the timing cover. Now, all of these lines, all this stuff, it wasn't terribly expensive. It's probably about 60, 70 US dollars. Um, I'll put links to all this stuff. Hopefully the price hasn't changed, but I'll put all of this. I got like 99% of it from Amazon. Um, so I'm sure that they sell it overseas as well. If this is something that you're interested in. Now, both of these lines, both of these breathers come into what's called an oil catch cam. Now, I'm sure that if you guys have been into cars for a little while, you might know what an oil catch can is, um, but the concept, or at least you've probably heard of one. Now, what this does is it takes that aerosol, the oil mixture, the air breather mixture that is coming out of these lines, and it has baffles inside here that will collect that oil and collects it down in the catch can, so it catches that oil. And then it has one output right here, which I've put a filter on, it doesn't quite fit. I'm gonna have to kind of rework that, I think. And this is just venting to the atmosphere. So 
catches all my oil, and then just lets the air out. And this is the same kind of burned air that would be coming out of your exhaust pipe. Now, what you could do is run a line from this oil catch into this intake valve here. And in fact, that's something that I really would have liked to do. Um, I still would like to do it, but I don't wanna use that big old fashioned PCV valve. So I got this check valve um, from Russell and it's got AN fittings on it. And it does conceptually the same thing. It lets air through, but doesn't let oil through. At least that's the hope. I mean, it definitely wouldn't with an oil catch can because there's no oil coming through this thing. So. Additionally, it prevents the intake from sucking through this because what you want is only the pressure that's building up in this breather system to go into the intake. Otherwise, you want your intake to be sucking air through the filters in the back. Now, this check valve couldn't quite get it working the way I wanted it to. Um, I'm still got to do some experimentation, but if you guys have any good recommendations for check valves that have AN fittings on them, um, shoot them in the comment section. I'd really like to see what you guys use if you have something like this, a custom breather system on your Mini. Otherwise, I'll just leave my intake plugged and keep it venting to the atmosphere. So let's take this oil catch off, and I don't think that I have anything in here right now. Now, the cool thing about this oil catch, and the reason I picked it up, is it has two things. One, it's perfectly unscrewable like this. Um, you can just take the bottom piece off. You don't have to undo all of the lines whenever you want to do something like this. On the bottom, it also has a drain plug right here. Now, for me, I don't foresee myself ever trying to drain it out right here. I'm always going to be unscrewing it like this and taking it out. And in the inside, there's actually nothing in here because I haven't really run the car since it's been all apart with the clutch out and everything. But this is going to, over time, collect oil and definitely is going to collect moisture because every time your car starts up for the first time, it's got moisture buildup and it's got moisture in all of these different cavities. And so that has to get pushed out. And so there'll always be kind of a soupy oil mixture in here. So if you have an oil catch and you open it up and you're like, oh my God, the oil is soupy. It looks like I have a blown head gasket. Don't panic. It's almost always that way. It's never like a perfect oil color. Um, think about the fact that it's getting aerosoled um, as well as that moisture is building up and mixing in here. On Instagram in the future, what I will do is once I uh, drive the car a good bit and I have some time to collect some oil, I'll take this off and let you guys know how much I collect over say like two or three weeks, something like that. Now, you can probably also see there is the baffle that's on your catch right here. There's also a filter, which you can't see on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw this back on and uh, that wraps up this video. So let's head back inside. Okay, folks, so that wraps up this episode. Like I said, it was a really short episode. Um, it was just about an Instagram request that I wanted to fulfill for you guys. But if you have any questions about how the system works or you're looking for any of the parts, all in the description, and you can post comments. I always respond to my comments when I get them. So uh, hopefully I can help you guys understand this and install one on your car if you want to get you know motivated, try something else new. Keep in mind that you don't necessarily have to use all AN lines. You can run all of these lines with regular hose clamps if you don't want to weld things on and all that stuff. So it's definitely like you can change how involved you want this whole job to be. But there's one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, I forgot it at the beginning of the video. I would love to start doing the subscriber showcase a little bit more involved in each episode. Um, so if you guys have a project that you want to share with me or you want me to share on the channel, um, submit your videos or pictures. Um, I've got a Google form down below. You can submit it that way or you can email me at classicminidiy at gmail.com and uh, send me those pictures, send me those videos. I've got a few in my inbox, so if you've sent them already, um, I do have them bookmarked. I just need to involve them in one of these episodes. Also, a huge shout out to all of my existing patrons. Soon you'll be getting a message from me asking you guys for a name to use for me to read off or to include in the credits on these episodes as someone who is supporting the channel. And if you are a patron already, if you fall into one of the new tiers, one of the new support levels, you will get the rewards aligned with that support level. So don't worry, I haven't forgotten you guys. You will all get all the cool new stuff if there's new stuff for your support tier. But that's it for this episode of Classic Mini DIY. Follow me on Instagram, and until next time, enjoy those minis and motor on.